Now in the sixth copy and paste, we are adding uh, the towers. Here we add a constraint to the tower. As usual, uh, it is becoming a pattern. So we first start with a constraint, and then uh, you go under and you define the towers. Uh, it's also the same story. So minimum distance, maximum distance. Uh, we give it the constraint to avoid towers. We use the constraint to not have towers on top of each other. This is why. And uh, then under you place the towers, but be sure to place uh, there four towers per player. We can tweak it and modify it. Let's modify it to make it uh, like five towers per player. As if four is not already not too much, but yeah, we'll uh, we'll do it. And there, as you can see, we'll have five uh, towers per player. And actually, it's quite nice looking. Perhaps you can uh, do a random map where you cannot have early aggression and give your players more central towers if you want. Yeah. And I think it is the seventh time we are copying and pasting our code. And if you haven't noticed, we have the same old pattern all over again. Here we have added a constraint in passable lands, which we should have added before. But I didn't want it to add it because I didn't want our code to be too clustered at the beginning. Now it is the perfect time to add it. What it really does, it uh, prevents you from having objects spawn on land you cannot build on or land you cannot traverse with units. Here we are adding uh, food constraints. Avoid herdables, avoid predator and avoid food. Avoid herdables prevent anything from spawning on top of herdables. Predator is on top of predator. If you don't know, predators are like hyena, lions, etc. Bears. Avoid food is uh, also a constraint to avoid something to other food sources, so by a certain distance. Uh, other food sources are like gazelle, etc. So you know them. Here, when you are dealing with food, as if you haven't noticed, this section is all about food in the map. Um, be sure uh, to have some randomness, uh, as it would make the map more uh, spicy and more realistic. Like it will look like, like a random map. So you want to add a little, a little bit of randomness. Here we are dealing with closed goats. Uh, it will be uh, goats, as you have noticed, near your town center. And we are using the constraint avoid food, so we don't want them to spawn on top of uh, hunting packs. And uh, here we are uh, spawning between one and three goats near your settlement. Uh, however, notice that uh, this number is not random between all players, it's random between sessions. So between each random map, we will have between one or three goats, but uh, between each player is the same numbers, or else it will be unfair. You can do it for each player uh, to be different, but uh, it's for another uh, video. Here we want uh, to spawn close chickens. Now notice it is its name is close chicken ID, but it can spawn either berry bushes or chicken. We use the probability here. I think it's an 80% for it to spawn chicken and 20% uh, to spawn berry bushes. Um, if it's less than, uh, because this number can be between zero and one. So if it spawns chicken, it will spawn them in a batch between six and 12, berry bushes between uh, four and eight. Here we are uh, spawning medium goats. The medium goats are goats through the halfway line of the map. They are a medium distance from your town center. And uh, we are spawning them between 0 and 3. Notice that you can have maps without medium goats. Here we are spawning the far goats, and the number is between 1 and 2. Here, uh, this uh, string is responsible for which type of object you are spawning. Uh, it doesn't matter the name there. So it's just an integer, an ID. Now here we are spawning huntables. Now we, are, we want to spawn huntables depending on your probability. So when you want to deal with probabilities, you use uh, random number generator. Here, random number between 0 and 1. If it's less than 0 0.1, we want to spawn zebra and gazelles. If it's less than 0 0.3, we want to spawn zebra. Uh, less than 0 0.6, we want to spawn rhinoceros. 0 0.9, we want to spawn rhinoceros. And less than 1, we also want to spawn rhinoceros. And we also use constraints and minimum distance, maximum distance. Here we want to spawn deers, so it is the same syntax all over again. Uh, now the deers 
can be either gazelles or giraffes, so also we use the same ten syntax as the chicken or barbushes. And adding random number generator and probabilities makes your map a lot more uh, concise and uh, coherent. Uh, yes, so, uh, and also I think the number of huntables is random as it is there, so we are randomizing the number of uh, huntables. And here we are dealing with far predators. Uh, the far predators are, as I told you, lions of hyena. And uh, the number uh, uh, here it is the probability of spawning each predator. And uh, we we'll either spawn two lions or three hyenas. And we also are using all the constraints of, of the above. And here we are spawning all the, our objects. So if you didn't uh, remember, this is how you do it. And yeah, but this is, I, as I told you, the minimum food required. You see it is not a lot of food. You should add more food when you want to make your own random map. And if we want to test it, you can see here we have the gazelles. This time it spawned gazelles. Here we have the, I think it's the medium goats. And there is the close goats. Only one, I think. It should be more. Here we have the chickens. So our probability was chickens. Here we have rhinoceros. And here we have the far predators. Here we have uh, some gazelles. Yeah. So as you notice, this is the minimum animals required, but it's still a good start. You still have to add trees, relics, and all of this. So we are nearly done for a good random map. So this is our ninth time we are copying and pasting. And here this time we are going to make forests. Now forests are a little bit trickier because you can have independent trees without being forests near your town center as if you start any random map you will see this independent trees uh, near your town center so we are going to have two type of uh, trees the trees that are going to be in a forest uh, in order for us to make a forest we must first create an area under it if you see a forest in the main map you will notice that it has uh, an area that uh, you can see where the forests are so it's like it's painting under the forest and uh, you can clearly distinct uh, a forest from a normal tree in the minimap so that's what we are going to do this is what it's uh, this is why it's a little bit trickier but first we must add a uh, null object constraints because we don't want uh, trees to be spawning on top of any ob other object we have uh, made so this is why we use a null object constraint and uh, here we are telling it to avoid all object by a distance of six meters and here we go down and uh, first we have to make our staggered tree which are the trees that i told you that are near your town center usually you can see a lot of them in normal random maps and here we make some random trees around the map um, these are trees that are not in a forest but are a little bit further from your town center and now here comes the fun part here we are uh, making our own forest so to do this yeah the syntax is a little bit uh, if you want long but I'll break it into pieces so here we make a new class forest I told you a class is a regroupment of several objects so here it will regroup uh, trees and here we make a constraint uh, we don't want uh, trees to be spawning on each other, so we don't want a forest on each other. And here, uh, it's not a constraint. It's not a constraint between tree. It's more like a constraint between each forest. So we don't have, want to have two forest uh, forests near each other. So the distance between uh, the minimum distance between two forests is 25. And here we also have a uh, for forest settlement constraints. Also, you don't want you to have your forest to spawn on town centers. And you want to keep a reasonable distance between your forest and town center. So we put it as 20. Here we are testing. Uh, uh, here we are going to have a for loop for us to testing uh, uh, to make forest. Now, fail count, it will tell you. Uh, you don't basically have to bother with it, but it will tell you how many times it tried to spawn a forest and it fails. So you don't want it to, to keep spawning forests forever. If it fails more than three times, like this, uh, you will exit the for loop. So this is it. But every time it doesn't fail, we are trying to spawn a forest. 
Now the number of tries will, will be um, 30 times the number of non-Gaia players, which is a lot. So yes. And the maximum count of a forest is 20 times the number of non-Gaia players. So this is uh, good. And here we are trying to spawn uh, an area which uh, was each forest. So notice here we are using uh, the forest ID for the same area, but the same area can't have the same name. So this is this is why its name is forest plus I. So it will be each time forest zero, forest one, forest two, etc. Here we set the area size. You can tweak these numbers. I told you how much you want. Here we'll have a random number generator. You can tweak also them for uh, probabilities changes. And here uh, you can set the type of tree which comes with the area. So here we are setting it to be savanna forest. And we add an area constraint uh, also for not have a forest on top of each other and all object constraints, forest constraint, etc, etc. All our previous defined constraints. And here the settings you can uh, tweak the numbers and see what they does. It's uh, something to do around the shape of the forest. And yeah, so that was all. And here we are spawning our straggler tree and random trees. The forest, you don't need to spawn them, the trees and the forest, because they are already spawned when you type uh, this command. And now if you want to check our random map, you can see our random map is pretty much complete. Uh, there is a bunch of forests there, and they are equally spread apart. Um, yeah, it's a playable map. You can already start playing it with your friends. Now it doesn't have relics, it doesn't have all the small details, but it's playable. So you have each of the three resources spread apart and you can easily advance to the mythic age and play it like a normal random map. So every player has a town center. And in the final part, I will show you some things you can add to make your map a little bit spicier. And yeah, here we arrived into the final part of our random map scripting tutorial. Yeah, I know it was a long video, but we arrived to our point. This is the final product. And uh, here I'm going to divide it into two parts. The first part I'm going to add relics because every random map should really have relics. So yeah. And the second part we are going to add some personal touches into the map to not uh, feel like a normal random map. And I will show you some potential for you to spawning units, for example, add areas, etc. So first we are going to add the edge constraints. I don't know if we added earlier. But if we didn't, this is the edge constraint. It prevents uh, units from spawning near the edge. And I want to do this for relics because I don't want relics to be near the edge. This is it. Uh, they usually do it like this. And here I'm spawning relics. If you're not familiar with the syntax <laughs> by now, I really don't know what to do. But uh, this is the same syntax we've gone through all over again. We are defining the relic. We are uh, spawning the relic object. We are giving it a, a minimum distance, maximum distance. We are giving it the constraints you must add. We have the edge constraints. Uh, create. Uh, uh, we have created here a constraint, relic versus relic. We don't. We want to avoid relics by a certain distance. We want to avoid the edge by a certain distance. Here we want to avoid the far settlements by a, a certain distance. We don't, don't want the relics to be too far, and avoid impassable lands. And there, under there, this is the final object we are spawning. And uh, yeah, we are spawning the relics. And I wanted to give two relics for every player, so to spice it up a little bit. It's like the marsh, perhaps. I don't know how they, how many relics they give in marsh, but yeah. And here I wanted to build some uh, areas of my own. So this is a bit special. I am giving an area for every player. I named it Snow Patch. It's for every player. Uh, we do this by looping for every player, uh, from I to number of non-Gaia players. Now you should you can start with zero and end it with number of non-Gaia players, but I added one. It doesn't really change anything. It's the same amount of looping you are doing. So here, uh, be sure to name your areas unique names. So snow patch plus I, it's the same thing as saying snow patch plus one, snow patch plus two, uh, snow patch plus two every time you iterate through the for loop. Snow patch three, etc. For every player, it will give it a unique ID, and if you don't give it a unique ID, um, it will be the same area. It will spawn only one area. Or uh, you want to spawn an area for every player, be sure to give it a unique ID. And here we are spawning a snowy patch. Its size is like this. You can tweak it however you want. And the terrain type is snowy. You will see an area for every player when we test it. And under there, 
here it comes a unique part uh, and you don't see it in normal random maps I'm giving a unique hero for every player however this hero will be spawned randomly so there is an equal probability of having one of each hero so it will be either Chiron, Agamemnon, Amonra or Odysseus and uh, for this I'm using a for loop for every uh, player and we are creating a random hero this is the same thing you must have a unique ID for every hero or else it will only spawn one hero and here uh, we are giving a number between 0 and 1 it's a probability thing if it's less than 0 0.25 so 25% will give it Chiron uh, less than 50 and but it must be over 0 0.25 so we are given Agamemnon etc etc and here we are spawning the heroes now the spawning of the heroes is not very clever I spawn some in the middle of the map but you can definitely do better with the spawning but uh, yeah it's very basic so here if we jump into our Age of Toji and test our random map we should be able to see everything working yeah so each player has a town center there is two relics for every player and here we are given a random hero as you can see I, I get given Amandra our enemy get uh, given Agamemnon and we have Chiron there and if I resign I should see also Amandra so every player has a random hero yes and everything is working you have gold mines you have town centers you have everything for every player yes also there was some instances when the town centers wouldn't spawn I tried to fix them in the code you can see the changes also I added some constraints from the previous parts and yeah but it shouldn't uh, happen anymore if it does then uh, tell me I may try to fix it more by giving more constraints and yeah that was all we finished our random map is definitely not a very advanced one but it's still the bare minimum uh, we can work with like every player has a town center has food has trees has gold mines relics and even uh, random heroes so it is a working random map but you can definitely do better with the terrains I gave uh, only three terrain types you can definitely add more to make it unique you can also see other random maps um, yeah uh, like Savannah for example and add elevations if you want me to do an advanced part I will do it uh, I will also add triggers to the random map I'll show you how to add them but for now I think this is enough this is a very long video and I don't want it to be any longer so yeah, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and uh, comment if you have any question. This video took me a very long time to make. It isn't easy to teach coding and uh, for beginners. And uh, I skipped many parts. Like, if there is something you could not understand, it is because I haven't explained every everything. I tried in the first video to explain the bare minimum, but I told you it is the bare minimum. There is many things you can, uh, you can learn through coding. Um, it will help you understand better and also uh, try to tweak every number in this uh, random map you will understand each function what it does and uh, yeah so it will give you unique maps and be sure to keep in mind that every map is called a random map so don't do fixed distances try to use constraints to have random distances and yeah you can tweak every number uh, there uh, except the probabilities be sure to not have probabilities greater than one and something like this don't do something silly dividing by zero etc and yeah so we'll see you next time goodbye and take care